you show the absolute nerve of this man, if you even want to call him a man. How many things do we need to hear, or excuse me, how many things do people out there who worship the Pope, who sit outside the Vatican crying when he drives by in his Pope mobile, who can't clearly grasp what scripture says about worshiping man, who think that this guy is not only a Christian, but they believe that he is some type of, they need to go to him and he is the one who will connect them with Jesus. This guy who's openly said that having a relationship with Jesus Christ is bad and dangerous. I mean, I don't understand how anybody sees this guy or any person and worships them the way that the Catholics worship this guy. This fraud, this guy who goes against scripture time and time again. The same guy who has had a commercial promoting a one world religion, which I covered, which I do need to re-upload, which they deleted, which shows Christians, Muslims, Jews, everybody together as one. Pretty much saying, oh, Jesus, Buddha, they're all the same Pretty much saying that he wants a new world order and a one world religion, yet people still follow this guy. You'd think he'd be outed by now. Pictures of him doing the hidden hand and all sorts of satanic hand signs. The 666, what a coincidence. That's the thumbnail in most of the articles about what I'm about to tell you. Not to mention the devil horns. The stuff he says, the worshipping of Mary, pushing the worshipping of Mary. Go to Mary for forgiveness. You go to Jesus. That's what the Bible tells us. It doesn't tell us to worship Mary. Now Pope Francis has come out and he said he wants to change the translation of the Lord's Prayer. And people are just like, oh, okay, well, he just, I mean, he's just going to tweak with it. Despite the fact that the Bible says, and we can start with Revelation Chapter 22, verses 18 through 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So Pope Francis is saying that he wants to change the words in the Lord's Prayer because of some of the stuff, or I guess the way that he's translating how Satan leads us to temptation. And he says it's Satan who leads us to temptation. That's his department. Pope Francis has called for a rewriting of the Lord's Prayer saying the current translation gives God a bad name and essentially does not give the devil his due. And people are just like, oh, okay, you know, it's not a big, it's not a big deal. It's a huge deal. He's saying to change the words in the Bible and to give the devil his due. Describing the Bible as a prayer taught by Jesus, the Lord's Prayer is viewed as the at least to uh, some churches, as the summary of the whole gospel used by Catholics, Protestants, Orthodox Christians, the prayer is common ground for churches which have historically fought over theology, and it can be recited by heart by millions around the world. But in a TV interview this week, Pope Francis said that the line asking God to, quote, lead us not into temptation should be changed because it's been translated badly. He says it's not a good translation. He told TV2000, a channel belonging to Italy's Conference of Bishops, because it implies God actively pushes people into temptation. I am the one who falls, Francis said. It's not him pushing me into temptation to then see how I have fallen. A father doesn't do that. A father helps you to get up immediately. It's Satan who leads us into temptation. That's his department, said Pope Francis. In an interview, the interview, I should say, gave a stamp of papal approval to moves already afoot in the church to change the line in the prayer. So what does the Bible, the Bible tells us not to alter, not to touch, not to mess with, not to add anything, anything written in the book. And the Pope, who millions of people worship, people think that this guy is, this is like a God on earth, that he's got a closer connection to God than anybody else. All this stuff I just cannot believe. You know, when we saw the Pope come to America, people were crying.
people who were, didn't believe in Jesus were showing up to show support. Right, and the Pope's coming out, talk, you know, he's promoting, you know, the K agenda and accepting of that, talking about one world religions, one world governments, all this stuff, and people just don't see what this guy is all about. It's amazing to me. It says, last month, the Catholic Church in France agreed to switch from the French equivalent of do not submit us to temptation to do not let us in- enter into temptation. The Pope said he was impressed with the new wording. The Lord's Prayer, also commonly called the Our Father, appears in two Gospels, Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13, and Luke chapter 11, verses 2 through 4. Down the centuries, the short prayer has been through the ringer, linguistically speaking, after being translated from Aramaic, the language Jesus spoke, to Greek and to Latin and to other languages. The problem stems from the translation of one Greek word, which is asynchius, which obviously I can't pronounce, a professor of the New Testament studies at Gregorian University in Rome, the Greek verb means take inside, and the form used in the prayer literally means don't take us inside, he added. But that's a very literal translation, translation which must be interpreted. A 4th century Latin tra- translation of the Bible by St. Jerome, which was adopted by the Catholic Church, sticks to the literal meaning using the Latin uh, inducri, which means bring in, despite what some headline writers might suggest, Francis is not suggesting changing Jesus' words, but just giving a better translation from the original Greek. I mean, before it says, before we criticize the Pope for inserting his own opinion into traditional prayer, we should recall that St. John Paul added an entire new series of mysteries to the rosary. I mean, this is just all, all this Catholic stuff. The rosary, I mean, please. What are people going to realize that these men... In the Vatican, who are Satanists, just like the Zionists, all these people working hand in hand with one another, when are they going to learn that just because somebody's elected by men as a pope and a bishop and all this stuff, even if they don't understand the corruption behind it, like we all understand, those of us who are awake who understand the black pope, who understand all of this stuff that the secret societies have implemented, which are sitting there controlling the decisions controlling the narratives and doing all that stuff just the fact that people are going to these men and who are wearing cloaks and yarmulkes it looks like on their heads and people are going to them going oh boy you know i will bow down throw money at them that these people have a better connection with jesus than anyone else that we need to go to them and confess our our sins to these people i mean where does anyone do these people read the bible it's amazing to me. So, of course, they're going to spin it and they're going to go, well, don't get your, you know, don't get yourself all tied up and upset that he's changing the, tr- he's just changing the translation. He's not adding or taking. Well, uh, by changing that, he is taking away and then adding a different word. So, wouldn't that mean that that's exactly what he's doing? I mean, again, Revelation 22, chapter 22, verses 18 through 19, for I testify to every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. It's pretty clear. You know, I don't think there's a fine line there of, well, how are you going to interpret that compared to interpreting this? But really what people should be doing is just waking up to all this stuff with the Vatican and the Pope. Right? This is a guy who on the record said relationships with Jesus are dangerous and harmful. He doesn't recommend that people have a relationship with God. And, you know, that's what the the Vatican or whatever the Catholic Church is there for and him. Right? I mean, it's amazing. Amazing. Yeah, people still, def- you know, uh, when they hear stuff like this, like, and listen, I, most people listen to my channel are obviously awake, but I still will get, and you'll see in the comments, a lot of people who are Catholic will come over and they'll go crazy, right, and defending the Pope and defending the Catholic Church and defending the Vatican, not having a clue really about any of this stuff, or at least they were indoctrinated with this so that they block it out of their heads, right, they refuse to hear anything that speaks against the Vatican or speaks against the Pope, then again, meanwhile, this is the same guy, like I said, who is telling you that we all need to come together and be one. All religions come together, that the dream is that all the religions will come together, that there will be world peace, and then they show 
all of these, you know, uh, statues or whatever you want to call them, idols. You know, they show Buddha and they show Jesus and the cross and all of it mixed as one as if saying, listen, it's all one and the same. We all believe in a higher power. What if, I mean, this is the guy who's supposed to be talking about Jesus Christ and that salvation is the only way, excuse me, the only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ. And he's saying, well, we can mix everything together and we can all get along and have world peace and nobody still sees it. It's amazing to me. So this guy is ready to alter part of the translation in the Lord's Prayer. Nobody seems too upset about it. Hey, you know, I saw this yesterday. Couldn't believe it when I saw it. Read more into it. And, I, you know, listen, anything involving the Pope, anything involving the Vatican, you know what they're trying to do because you know that they're going to just keep twisting things in Scripture. And just like this, as he's talking about, well, we got to give the devil his due so people know it's really Satan, right? But they're pretty much telling you temptation and sin is good in today's world, so they're pretty much telling you Satan is leading you towards good. That's my take on it by what they're doing. Give the devil his due. Give the devil his due. Throw the, you know, punt the devil into the pit. That's what I can't wait for. I can't wait for Judgment Day. Guys like this, forget about it. This guy is just absolutely disgraceful. I thank you for listening to today's show. I mean, I, right? Un, it's unbelievable. People out there are still worshiping this guy. Wake up, please. Wake up. This is earth to your brain. Wake up. Again, I thank you for listening to today's show. God bless all of you on your